All right, we're live. Welcome back to the Big Daddy Gun Studios. I'm Hank Strange. We've got Walter Keller and Tim Harmson of Military Arms Channel. Walter's from Safety Harbor Firearms. We might have some people jumping in, jumping out, because Mac is pretty busy. Yeah. Yeah, but we wanted to talk. <laughs> huh? I just raced in, turned all the lights on, and uh, yeah, I thought you were driving. <laughs> and I, I'm telling, I'm telling the wife I'm gonna be 30 minutes late. Oh home, man, she's, so. <laughs> I'm just gonna be in more trouble with your wife than usual. I know, so, right? I always, I yeah, I always get in trouble. So the the reason we're having this conversation, it seems like there's some conflicting news going on with the Sig P320. Looks like uh, the Dallas Police Department uh, like put a recall or stopped using it. I guess they were carrying it. And um, and they said that they were worried about if you drop it, that, that it would fire accidentally. And then um, there's been conflicting news saying that uh, those are false. We've been trying to get something out of SIG themselves, which I think they just put out stuff. So Yeah, I got a press release here. Yeah. Uh, let me pull it up. And Mac, you're like the guy that I, that I know that's the most thoroughly tested the P320. So... Did you do any testing like this, or did you come across any problems? I don't. I don't typically do drop testing. Um, uh -uh. That's kind of kind of one of those things that I've never really considered much. Uh, I know, like Rob Ski does drop testing, but not necessarily to get the gun to discharge, but more or less to see if you can break something other than causing the gun to discharge. I guess if you wanted to, you know, do um, you know, load a primer in without a bullet or powder and drop guns to see if you get the primer to pop. I've never done it. Um, I remember when the, the Caracal F, you remember those pistols, they, uh, they, they claimed there's a bunch of them out there. I had one. I foolishly sent mine in yeah, I did for the too. repair, which never came. <laughs> they just kept all the guns and disappeared. You never um, got that back ever? No. I, nobody got them back. Wow. So I got, I got a rebate. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, it, I can't remember what they gave us, but the gun wasn't what they gave us back. It's kind of like the R51. Send them in for repair. And then six months later, oh, by the way, they're non-repairable. We're just going to you know, come out with a new gun a year from now. Um, yeah, so I've not seen that now. I have two P320s and I've had um, okay luck with my first one. I had light primer strikes. If you Google like primer strikes P320, you'll find that uh, it's not uncommon, but that's the one I used to my thousand round test and, and it didn't have a single light primer strike. So that gun seems to have cured itself. The, uh, the second one I have is a tactical model that has a threaded barrel and all that stuff. And I've never had a, a single failure with the gun. Uh, I, I will say I'm not the biggest fan of the P320. I think it's a, um, you know, in essence, it's a, a P250, which was a horrible failure for SIG. Yeah. Uh, and it was hammer fired. Then they took that, put a striker assembly in it, put it back out on the market, and lo and behold, everybody falls in love with it. Yeah. Um, I never, so when, I, I had the P250s, believe it or not. And that's the reason why I have not bought a P320. Because it seems like the the P320 seems like an improvement for what I've seen, what I've shot, but you know I'm kind of like worried. And then there's been you know people have been caught up in this because they got some military contracts, right? Well, yeah, there's a whole funny story behind that too. I mean, look at all the, the hoopla on the internet about the. Uh, oh, by the way, guys, this is Connor. You see him in What's videos going? and stuff. He works hey, at the shop. Hey, What's up, man? Um, yeah, you've seen all sorts of, of stuff about the, the military contracts. You know, people are saying that the, the Army didn't finish its testing, that it only got through one phase and then just declared the SIG the winner, and Glock is filing a lawsuit and screaming foul, kind of like when Colt stomped their feet and screamed foul when FN won the uh, M4 contract. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Um, what I do know is, is I have historically have had a very low opinion of the P320, and I always thought it was kind of interesting why it became – SIG's one of their most popular handguns. Again, it's based on the the atrocious 250, which was probably <laughs> one of the biggest failures SIG has had. And they've had a number of them, but that was one of their bigger failures. And then all they do is yank the hammer out of it, stick a striker in it. It looks like an afterthought. It looks like a hammer-fired gun. They retrofitted a striker into, and lo and behold, the entire internet community and gun community falls in love with it uh, because it has a good trigger. It's ugly as sin. And I've, I've, we joked around the shop, I've said it to Connor, I, I said, this will go down in history as one of America's worst military service handguns. Um, yeah. I, I didn't know what was wrong with the M93. I didn't know. Yeah, uh, he was in the Marine Corps, he had an M93. Um, you know, 
A1, yeah. well, Marine Corps had adopted the A1, so you had newer ones. Yeah. Um, you know, the M9 was a fine service pistol if you just kept it maintained. I mean, the M16 can become junk if you don't maintain it. But anyway, the, the 320, I've just never been a, a fan of. It seems with typical SIG quality in my experience, it's hit or miss, man. You never know if you're going to get one that works. If you get one that works, it works great. If you get one that doesn't, I mean, yeah, they're horrible yeah. lemons. So it's just typical SIG USA quality, man. It's just you never know. Uh, hopefully it doesn't turn out to be a, a mess because I'd hate to think that our troops have, you know, a, a bad handgun. But I, I just, you know, for the last 10 years, man, I've given SIG many, 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 many tries. And uh, they've let me down. They let me down with the 1911, the whole 556 five, series of rifles, which they've since discontinued. I've always said those things were awful. <laughs> finally, they finally discontinued the darn things. It needed to go away. Um, the 1911s were a joke. I already said that. The P250 was an absolute atrocity. Uh, what about the uh, uh, MPX and MCX? Oh, oh, don't get me started on that, man. It's <laughs> well, like was throwing his up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's it, how many recalls have they had? I mean, we don't even know what version they're on. SIG just loves making changes to their guns and not incrementing the nomenclature. So, like, take the MPX for example. There are two different generations that we know of. Two different magazines. They use two different magazines. One has a black follower. One has a green follower. You don't even know what gun you have. If they Talk about market confusion. They don't call it the MPX A1 and A2. It's just the MPX. They did the same thing with the 5.56 rifles. They kept making these incremental changes to the point, and it happened with the MCX. I called SIG up one time and said, hey, I, 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 uh, I, I bought a 300 blackout upper for my MCX rifle. I need that little ring to go on. The, uh, the muzzle tube because they had to come up with their own goofy proprietary suppressor that had a taper on it. I said, and thread, that, pitch. and thread pitch. Well, I mean, no, that's European thread pitch, but I had that argument with them. But anyway, they said, well, what upper do you have? Well, there are two different MCXs at the time, and this was a year ago. There was one with an auto regulating gas system, and then there's another one with a, with a manual regulating gas system, but they didn't, you don't know which one you're buying. And then they tell me, well, that 300 blackout upper you bought won't work with your model number. You're, you're lower because they asked for the serial number. And I said, well, that's funny because it's fired, you know, five, 600 rounds without a, without a problem. I'm like, oh, well, that's good news. It's like they don't even know what they're doing, man. Yeah. It's, I mean, so why? That's the Microsoft. That's the Microsoft business plan. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's just it's like throw it out there and they hope it sticks to the wall, man. I mean, they're just shotgunning stuff out. At one time, and I don't know if it's because of me commenting on this or not, but at one time, Sig had discontinued had a discontinued products page on their website, and I post on my Facebook page the link. I say, go check this out. They're, they literally have more discontinued items in their on this page than they have current production items. Yes. So why do they have such like, a good? It was just they like have a, a good reputation with gun products. guys, right? They finally took it down. Good do news they? Though, if your dog gets cold, they make dog jackets. So yeah. They're making oh. those. <laughs> do they have a good? Do they have a good reputation with gun guys? What's that? Do they have a good reputation with gun guys? Who's sick? Yeah. Well, old older gun guys, they're still riding on their laurels from SIG Germany, but what a lot, a lot of people don't realize is SIG USA has no affiliation with SIG Germany. SIG Germany sold to a company that doesn't even make guns. They're not even producing guns, I don't think, in Germany anymore. Uh, what, what, what Swiss uh, manufacturing still goes on for their rifle lines, the Swiss are doing, but SIG USA is autonomous, man. They're, they they they're off on their own, man. Doing the MCX, the MPX. That's all stuff designed right here in the United States, and has nothing to do with Sig Germany. Right. So they're just riding on the name. We just we got uh, Patrick R has joined us from uh, the Firearm Blog. Just making yeah, sure. I got it right this time. Yeah, just making sure I got it right because I get things I get those mixed up. And uh, you know, so we're talking the Sig. So um, Mac is this is not the first time that we've seen someone try to do these modular guns, right? Based off of a like a chassis <laughs> that's serialized. As a matter of fact, Sig's being sued right now by Steyr because they had the patent on the modular trigger design. Okay. Uh, so, so is Breda. I mean, Breda's getting sued too. It's kind of like, but I don't know how how much that's actually going to stick. Um, you know, Uncle Sam has a big stick, and if Uncle Sam wants their uh, M17 pistols, it, lawsuits be damned, they're, they'll get their M17 pistols. So I don't know how much that's going to benefit Steyr. You know, Mossberg raced out, bought an old patent for, um, you know, self-contained AR triggers, and um, that didn't work out. Yeah, that so wasn't well. upheld, right? No. They yeah. they tried suing everybody and, and the they courts. Just, suing CMC, I think. CMC. Anybody that had a oh, yeah, contained yeah. trigger. They tried suing everybody, yeah. and it all fell apart for them, didn't work out so yeah. well for them. So I don't know how that's going to play out for Steyr. Um, but yeah, the, the modular trigger thing, you know, SIG really kind of made it a big thing with uh, with their guns. 
but um, it, it's definitely, I like the modular trigger and the 320 better than the APX. The APX, I, I think, I show you how to take that thing apart. It's, it's, it's more challenging to take apart. The SIGS trigger pops right out. Um, okay. But, and, and, right, and, yeah. and I don't think that these are actually being issued. I don't know if either you or Patrick know if the P320 is actually being issued to soldiers, right? They, they got the military contracts, but they're not actually it, being issued it, yet. Uh, it's, too, it's too soon. I understand the M17 is currently shipping. It is? Wow. That's my understanding that the first units have received their M17s as uh, maybe 30, 45 days ago. It was supposed to be, I think, the 101st Airborne. You have to speak up. Oh, I think it was the 101st that was getting the first ones. Okay. Yeah. So, so, and this particular story, Patrick, this is coming from the Dallas PD, the original story. So do you want to tell us real quick about the story you posted on the Firearm blog? Sure. Yeah, let me put my dog in a place where I can speak a little freer. Oh, you're walking the dog? <laughs> I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm CNN or something right now. <laughs> We made, we made Mac pull off the highway, <laughs> you know, and come right, in sorry, here. So, okay, no, that's cool. With that guy there, and uh, he's he's not being so cooperative. He's only eight months old. Anyway, um, yeah, so a uh, departmental memo was leaked on pistol form, and I kind of did some digging, called EPD. They verified that it was a departmental memo that they haven't pulled from the uh, approved list. And um, a couple of other, like, not really important things they confirmed. Um, when I called SIG, they had no idea what was going on. They said, um, we're not really sure where that's coming from. They say they got it from SIG, but we've never said anything about it being unsafe. And it hasn't. Um, now, Mac, I'm sure that you got the press release maybe at 345 today. From SIG. Yeah, I'm looking at it on my phone right now. All right. Read it, take a look down there at the bottom of the uh, the press release where it says there have been no failures in U.S. drop tests or no U.S. something. Look at how specific that is. As line. a result, individual attempts to perform drop tests outside professionally controlled environments should not be attempted. Um, all Sig Sauer pistols incorporate effective mechanical safeties to ensure only uh, they only fire when the trigger is pressed. However, like any mechanical device exposure, uh, to, to acute conditions, e.g. shock, vibration, heavy or repeated drops may have a negative effect on the safety mechanisms and cause them not to work as designed. This language is common in the owner's manuals of major handgun manufacturers. That sounds like lawyer speak for, yeah, it may happen in, in extreme conditions. No, there's, there's a specific line in that. I don't have it in front of me, and unfortunately I'm on my phone, but it says something about testing in the U.S. or U.S. something specifically states U.S. in that press release that I received. Um, that's something to pay attention to because I believe that the P320 may have failed a drop test in Europe. I can't recall what the... Uh, Here we go. ...what drop was. I think this might be it. It says, in response to social media rumors questioning the safety of the P320 pistol, a variant of which was selected by the U.S. government as the Army's modular handgun system, Sig Sauer Inc. has full confidence in the reliability, durability, and safety of its striker-fired handgun platform. There have been zero, and then in brackets, a number zero, reported drop-related P320 incidents in the U.S. commercial market, with hundreds of thousands of guns being delivered to date. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, I am. Yeah. It's pretty, it's reasonably specific. Um, I, for them to go ahead and put it that way, and I have offer like I've had off record conversations with people connected to SIG that have been privy to some of the testing that SIG's done. They say that there possibly is an issue somewhere in there. There is a reason it didn't win um, the FBI trials, and like the fact that nobody at SIG has any idea about what's going on. I mean, like there might it's, not be anything wrong with the gun. It might be fine. That's normal, but, man. It's like. Any any gun company you call with a problem, they're always. It seems like they always pretend in the customer service department. Oh man, we've never heard of that problem before. And meanwhile, you go to the forums and there's you know ongoing pay, threads at ARFCOM that are you know 50 pages deep of people having the same problem, and and you're just the first person to call. You know, they all go, yeah, man, we've never heard of that. You know, yeah. If you call up Century Arms and ask them how many guns they've had returned in RS47s, <laughs> they'll swear up and down yours is the first one they've ever gotten back for repair. 
<laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We uh, <laughs> funnily enough, funny enough, we were talking about that yesterday. So who knows the uh, process that military and all these? Because it seems like there's a bunch of different uh, government departments and police departments that are, you know that are going with the P320, who knows what these people, what do they actually go through when they're testing these things? Each, each, um, each testing standard is different than the last. None of them are identical. So you have to read the actual solicitation to figure out what it needs to endure. And then you have to get your hands on the testing process and figure that out because FBI's testing process was different than immigration and Homeland Security. Immigration and Homeland Security was different than MHS. MHS was different than NATO. They're all different. The NATO testing is pretty intense. Um, Tim yeah. carries a PO1 here at the shop, and you know he's been talking about it and singing the praises of it for a while now. And we had one come in the come in the Copper Custom here a couple of days ago, and so I went and looked at the NATO testing for this gun, and I was blown away. I was like, this thing was so actually they, able to. They'll have NSN numbers on them. Yeah. So. Yeah, everybody everybody does their own testing differently. So uh, what does that NSN NSN number mean? It means it like, passed NATO testing standards and it's approved for NATO use. NATO it's in the system. <laughs> uh, I, no, 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 no. Uh, so an NSN doesn't necessarily mean it is passed NATO testing. It just means that it is in the NSN, the national stock system. So it's in the system it's by U.S. government for whatever reason. Like you know, that, that's what an NSN is. Like you can have socks that have an NSN. That doesn't mean right. they pass. Everything, yeah. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Everything um, the everything the military buys on a regular basis has one. What what do you yeah, but well, this NSN number I don't think is a US military one. It's a it's a it's a NATO European NSN. Um what's what's the testing what happened with the testing with regards to the M seventeen? There's rumors floating around the internet that the testing was cut off prematurely, that Glock is filing suit and it, you know, uh, people are angry. So they, they've already protested it. The protest has already been closed out. Um, now, that's, that's kind of squashed. Glock may come at him with a lawsuit, but I, I frankly, I think it's baseless. There was, well, I mean, they submitted a gun that didn't even meet the requirements, from what I understand. Glock? No, 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 no. So now, the, the big, big misconception with MHS is that it has to be modular. Everybody looks at that little chassis system, and they yeah. say, modular. that's what modular means. Well, that's not the case. Modular 95% of their soldiers. That, that's what it means. 95% of the you know soldiers enlisted right now can pick that up. If it fits their hand, they could shoot a reasonably decent fall with it. That's what modular is about. <laughs> okay, so they so they, they didn't need it. They didn't need there, man. That, <laughs> wow. So the soldier is modular. We want modular handgun, which just means we want 95% of, of the people to be able to shoot it. Well, well some words. I guess that makes just about yeah. every handgun on the U.S. market <laughs> modular. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. About it though. Now, the only um, MHS submission that I'm aware of that um, was like a chassis system was the 320 and the APX. Take that back. There were two, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's only two. Now, we had um, Glock get to the final round, and we had uh, FN get to almost the final round. They were cut just before the uh, – oh, They were just far. Right. Yeah. So, so, so what happened? What's the reason why everything got cut off? I mean, why did they? Why did this? This seems like a mystery. You know, it's like ripe for um, for some kind of um, what is it? What conspiracy controversy? Yeah. I mean, it, it yeah. surrounds every handgun trial. You remember? I remember. I'm old enough to remember when uh, the P226 and the M9 went up against each other, then the 92 FS, and uh, you know, oh, the only reason. Beretta one is because they underbid SIG and, you know, all these rumors and there need to be new tests. And I, I can't remember. Did they run a second battery of tests? I can't remember if there's such a big stink. They actually what? did testing again. But, um, yeah, I mean, it seems like every time we pick a new service, anything, there's always a controversy around it, you know. So I don't think it's all that surprising yeah. the M17 has all this controversy swirling around it. No, I, I don't. I don't believe that um, there's actually anything wrong with the testing. I don't think that there was any corners cut or anything like that. And um, I think it's just Glock being angry they didn't win the contract. That's all there is to it. <laughs> oh, I agree. It's just Glock stomping their feet. If Glock would actually produce something that isn't 30 years old in design, maybe they would have a chance. I mean, good grief, they haven't done anything innovative in 30 years. 
I don't think you need to. In- I mean, you don't necessarily need to innovate. I'm not saying you don't have to be innovative, but you don't necessarily need to innovate to be the the right choice for a job. No. Well, it's true, but seriously, I think it, it, products should improve, and changing a finish or putting you know finger grooves on it or taking them off. Um, Stippling. Ford slide serrations. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Ford slide serrations. I mean, all these cosmetic changes isn't it, literally the gun's been on the market since the 80s. It's it's a but so and, and so other how guns we, are, are how do we know that Glock hasn't actually like made some innovations, but they're just waiting until who knows when to just you know probably waiting for Gaston to Glock. die because he's probably like yeah. Bill Ruger. He won't let Glock do anything innovative because he doesn't want to change anything. I mean, yeah, because I mean, I've heard I've heard like they have a carbine and stuff like that, and whenever I ask them privately, <laughs> they just look at me and smirk. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you know, they Glock. They have Glock knives. Yeah, I. I, so, I Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I don't. I don't know anything about a Glock carbine. I was. Making... <laughs> I'm just. I just want to start another controversy. You're thinking of a high point. You're thinking of a high point. No. Well, the thing is, is that I mean, there's no way that they're not developing stuff. I mean, it, well, I guess it's possible that they're not de- I think they are developing things. They're just not going to put anything out because they feel like uh, you know they can just keep making money off of the Glocks the way they have them now. I, I like. You got to look at me. There, there's. Some- six months behind on Glock 19s. They oh, work. yeah, I know. People buy them as fast as they can make them. So I guess, you know, the, they, they don't have to change anything. So yeah. they maybe, don't have to innovate. Right. Maybe, maybe if we stop buying Glocks, which I don't know, it's kind of tough. Know, I'm kind they of have a reputation now, man. It's like the yeah. Glock 19 is probably one of the most popular and one of the best carry handguns out there. I mean, you know, why, why come up with something new when they don't have to? It's, you know, eventually they'll run out of steam, they'll hit that plateau, and somebody will come out with a better mousetrap, and, and they're just kind of apparently sitting around waiting for that to happen. So. Okay, who's come the closest? Is the, is, so the, the 320 is nowhere close, right? Oh, I'd say 320 sales are pretty strong. I'd say the 320 is, 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 is growing, and, and if it gets and holds the military contract, I could see in the U.S. market the 320 passing Glock sales at some point. Um, uh, I, I think Time. I think you're going you're gonna to have five, ten years of culture building before that can even maybe happen. Yeah. Right. I mean, but you have to agree there's a chance. It, it, it Just because it was adopted by the U.S. military, people tend to want what the government adopts. And so if that happens, that's going to give the P320 the best crack at unseating the Glock as, as the reigning no champion point, of carry guns. At no, at no point were at 92 is ever flying off yep. the shelves at an alarming rate. Nope. No, that's true. That's true, but it was it was it was never really meant to be much of a carry gun, and it, it's um, it's a club for a nine millimeter. It's a big gun, right? But the P three twenties they are selling more in the stores. I know I've seen it in Big Daddy Guns. Uh, Mac, are you selling any? Are you even selling those? I know you don't like them. I, I, don't, I don't sell Sig no. No, okay. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I, again, I mean, their their quality's hit and miss. I mean, I know that the it, it you know that one I did with the thousand round torture test to it did stunning, you know, stellar performance, but. Um, Are they all like that, though? Yeah, I mean, it's just a cheaply made handgun. I'm not impressed with it, with the quality of it in general, and I've seen just as many problems with them as I have seen ones that work awesome. So it's just kind of a roll of the dice, in my opinion, anyway. Okay. Yeah, but I don't have that. I know that for a long time that the full size and the compact were really hard to come by. I'm sure that if Mac had somebody come in, um, yeah, and try to order one, he had a hard time getting it because. They're trying to fulfill contracts, but I don't believe they're moving that many more than they were. Okay, so they were popular you're... for a while. I mean, it, you know, they've 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 been they've been pretty high on people's buy lists for some time, and then yeah. it, it, they, then you throw in the M17. Now everybody wants the M17, and yeah. that's all all the rage on the internet these days. And you know, given it is modular and you can put a small grip on it, make it Glock 19 <laughs> sized. It's you know definitely easier to carry around than an M9. The M9 oh. is just you know, most people don't carry a service size pistol around. Yeah, and then I think there's people that are going to make the frames as well. I, I forget the name of the company right now. It's escaping right, me. Oh, it's a matter of time, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just like, you know, if, if if SIG gives approval, I mean, they may have to wait until SIG's patent runs out. Like, Glock can't get away with it anymore because I'm sure their patents, long since expired, people can make Glock frames now. Yeah, so... Um, so what is a better alternative out there? I'm sure, you know, there's people that want to know and they're asking in the questions here, what's the better alternative? What's another alternative to a Glock? FN, HK, what do you guys I'm, think? 
honestly really, really, really impressed by the 509. <laughs> I'm just the opposite. I'm really, really, really under impressed with the 509. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, I, I think maybe with the, if they had special ammo or something they were using with it, but in my, in my use, the gun is, um, it, the, the, I have one test sample, of course, but even when it was brand new with whatever ammo, the it, its ejection was so weak and erratic, it was really, really bad. And then we ran it through the gauntlet tests and it puked hard. I mean, okay. it, it seems, it seems oh, to me yeah. the gun is oversprung. It's almost like it's it designed to shoot a heavier nine millimeter load. It, it's just it a was, real, real heavy recoil spring um, and the gun is just all over the place. So yeah, it was, it, so one of the guys on the R&D team, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get, get my dog some water. Um, one of the guys on the uh, R&D team is a friend of mine, and we were talking. They did develop that gun for, like, hotter 124-grain NATO spec ammo. Um, now, I've shot a, a crap load of 115-grain, like, target load through both examples that I've got. I've got one with an Apex trigger in it, and I've got one with a uh, – that I've had since uh, probably, I don't know, February. Um, I have maybe I don't know, fifteen hundred, two thousand rounds. Yeah, and I mean, I as a range it. gun, I, I never had a malfunction with it. As a range gun, it it started. I mean, the first thing that happened is as soon as they put it in the water and pulled it out, it hydro locked and didn't fire the first round. And then we run it through again. The second time we put it in the water, it comes right out of the water and hydro locked again and didn't fire a round. I mean, that's that's a pretty new mistake for a gun that was submitted for military trials because they're going to submerge them. Um, you know, my first yeah. generation Smith and Wesson M&P had that problem, but Smith caught on and, and uh, put a groove channel, striker channel in the guns, and they don't have that problem anymore. But, um, you know, if, if, it, if it it passes the air test just fine, as long as you don't get it even slightly dirty, it, it runs like a champ. It seems to have problems when you put it in mud, dirt, and water. So as a military pistol, I find it to be very underwhelming. I think they're probably better choices, unless... Again, I don't have the ammo that they used for testing in the MHS program, but it, just in general, you know, if I was going to carry a gun, it would be very low on my list of guns I would consider for carrying. Okay. Oh, yeah. No. So, so the uh, no, two o'clock, you know, the 509, it, my experience is that it impresses me. Yeah, I know that Tim's had a, a different experience. Um, I've got mixed feels about the, the P10C, but I think it's got potential. Okay, so what do you guys? So that so the um, that's FN the five hundred nine. What about something from HK? I not a fan at okay. all. Okay. No, the VP yeah. nine's the VP nine is is. Um, I have to be careful what I say here because I I've promised certain parties <laughs> that could lose their <laughs> but you're done. Statement. But there, it, it's not. It, it's it's fairly well known that the VP nine has fleas. Um, to be an affordable pistol it was not meant to be a go-to-war gun. It's a H, yeah, it's a Volks pistol, people's pistol. It, it, it's uh, you know, HK stands behind their hammer-fired guns, like their USPs and and the P30s. Their hammer-fired guns are their go-to-war guns, and that's what they would recommend if you're going to go into extreme conditions with a handgun. The VP9 is a great range gun. It'd be a good carry gun. And I mean, I, I carried it for a year until I started to find out some of the issues that it had. But I mean, one of the things I first noticed was that it was horribly undersprung. And uh, when soon I bought a threaded barrel from HKParts.net and put a suppressor on it, and I had to, you know, force the slide home every round because that last quarter inch of travel, there's just literally no spring pressure. You can knock them out of battery when they're dirty and they'll stay out of battery. Uh, HK realized that and very quickly um, put VP40 springs in all their nine, nine millimeters. So now all of them have the same spring in them, but um, I think there'll probably be some other incremental changes to the VP series. Okay, uh, so, I, so I this, okay, so this is uh, this is not from me before you guys get started. <laughs> so someone in the comments wants to know, what about the Hudson, <laughs> the Hudson 9? <laughs> um, is, that, is that even out? Is that out? Yes, cool. yes, 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 all right, all right. I just, I just talked to Hudson. I just talked to Hudson like three days ago. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just had a, an extended conversation with Cy. Um, they are having they, they had some finish issues on some of the small parts. Uh, Cy was not happy with how they looked, so he sent them back and had them refinished. Uh, they should be at their facility assembling pistols at sometime next week, is what I was told, and they should be shipping in the week after, is my understanding. Cool. Okay. I look forward to seeing on the market. 
Yeah, so but, I mean, we can't comment on a gun that's not in the market, yeah, right? So that's I mean, not, yeah, that's not out there. And even if it was out there, it's, I, I mean, you can't put it in the category of Glock. No, no, no. It's not even, so, in the um, yeah. I mean, not even close. I, yeah. I think they ought to fire their marketing team calling it a striker fired 1911 as a disservice <laughs> to the design. It's far more innovative than that. Oh, um, I, 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 whoever their marketing person is saying, you know, the striker fired 1911, man, that was a complete disservice to the handgun. It's so much more evolved than that. It's, it's like a clash. Like, it has the ergonomics of a 1911 and that's where it, the, the similarities end. it's, it's, it's a totally new design that I find personally quite interesting. So it'd be yeah, fun it's going to, it's going to be something cool, but not necessarily something that we're going to see go into service anytime. So. No, I don't know if it's yeah. intended to be a military service handgun. Yeah. I mean, no. it's, that's, that's kind of like what we're talking about here. Is there a gun? I mean, honestly, I really just don't understand why Glock didn't do better. Why there's really no one that's going, is, did anyone go with Look, the Glock? There was, there was, this is my, there was never a reason to replace the M9 to begin with. It's no, the, I guess. Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. was handguns in the US military are they're not a primary fighting weapon and special operations gets to pick whatever gun they want anyway so they picked, they picked Glock didn't it yeah, yeah, they well, some do some have picked Glocks and and whatnot they've used H and K's they've used SIG 226's I mean they've used all sorts of guns they can use whatever the heck they want for people that use them as offensive weapons the the if the military, if the army would have taken the money they've wasted trying to adopt a new pistol because there was nothing wrong with the M9 I don't care what anybody says the, the, if, if you had problems with your M9, it was just not maintained properly. Yeah. Right? So, right? Oh, here's a, it was a fine service pistol. There was right. no reason to spend billions of dollars adopting a new service handgun that is, doesn't even fight in the primary role. It's like, yeah. it's a rimp so, weapon, right? For the most part. It, it's, it, it blew my mind that we were doing that. <laughs> 15 years of war, and how do we decide to waste taxpayer money, adopt a new handgun? How about you take a third of that money and train the soldiers how to use them because that's the biggest problem. Well, they can't do anything right. with them because they don't know how to use them. Anyway, I get riled up about that. that, that I, when I see government waste like that, I want to kick a puppy. I mean, it's just unbelievable <laughs> how, how it, it was just mind-numbing stupidity that they would, they would even go off into a venture to adopt a new handgun. They tried to replace the M16 at least four times now, and they get halfway through the trials, get everybody all excited, and all these companies spun up wasting millions of dollars. The government's wasting millions of dollars. Yeah. And then halfway through, they go, oh, never mind, the M16's fine. It's a big boondog. Well, let me just, uh, Patrick, I'll let you get a word in here. Uh, the Tyvin yeah. Show, and, and he actually donated five bucks. That's why I'm stopping everything right here for a second. So he says, military should never have a plastic handgun for use. If a metal handgun breaks, a soldier can take it to support and get it fixed on the spot. And he was in the army. I think he was an armorer. So that's his comment. All right. Um, yeah, so Patrick, what do you have to say? Yeah, I'm gonna touch on what, uh, what Tim had to say. And um, well, yeah, yes, there was absolutely a reason to replace the M9. Uh, maintenance costs of the M9s that we had in service at the time were getting to be so high that actually buying new guns starts to become cheaper at a point, and that's where we were. Um, that's why it does make sense. Now, yeah, they've tried to replace it several times. There have been a bunch of programs and a bunch of money wasted because people stand in the corner and scream, there's nothing wrong with the M9. We don't need to replace it. When the truth is, it's going to be cheaper to go with a new platform. Um, it's going to cost the DOD a hell of a lot less money to field the 320, and it's going to cost the DOD a fraction of what it costs to maintain an M9 to just flat out replace a 320. See, I, I, I'd like to see those numbers from the GAO because I don't know how retraining all of your armorers, putting all new parts into a system, training everybody, training new all holsters. the troops, buying all new handguns is cheaper than maintaining the existing system. New holes. Uh, the yeah, it, there comes a point when, so it, like on a frame, if a frame on a M9 starts to wear out and you have issues or you have a breakage there, um, at that point you need to replace the whole pistol. You have to wait replace a whole the whole weapon system, and that's a five hundred dollar cost roughly. I forget the exact numbers. If a frame goes bad, I mean, I've I've seen you know the manufacturing of the M9. If the frame goes bad, there's no reason to toss out the barrel locking piece slide. Well, yeah. I yeah. mean, you replace the frame. It's a twenty dollar part. That's not the government way, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, seriously. And, and again, handguns are not primary fighting weapons. If they want to spend money on something, you know. <laughs> yeah. But what do we, so, and then what do we do? Camouflage, you know, get, well, don't have tiger stripes and, and dressing sailors in blue uniforms. So when they go overboard, you can't find them. We spend our fair share of 
<laughs> on that too, man. We, we really, really yeah. have. We spent on camo, <laughs> bad camo with that. Yeah. So what happens if, like, with the with the three twenty or um, what is it? The M like, the uh, what are we calling it here? The uh, the M seventeen. What happens if that actually does have problems and then they have to start this all over again? They'll spend billions of dollars trying to make it work, just like they did the F twenty two and everything else the government buys when they race to a decision. That, they did that with the F9 as well. Like, there were a lot of changes in the development process and the adoption process, and even after it was adopted. To get what, the M16? No, no, the M9. Oh, the M9. Yeah. Well, the biggest, the biggest problem was that locking block that had a, a, a failure about every 5,000 rounds. You know, they, they just did some recontouring, got rid of some right angles, and the locking blocks, you know, lasted to 15 or 20,000 rounds or something. But, yeah. I mean, there's always teething pains when you, when you take a new weapon system and put it into the field. I mean... Nobody can break something like a soldier or a Marine, especially. So I, I, I personally don't feel we're going to see a widespread issue where, you know, the, the DOD is going to be like, oh, crap, we made a really bad decision here, guys. We need to start from scratch. <laughs> well, they'll never admit it. Come on. They'll yeah. never admit it. You know? <laughs> no. So no, no. even privately, even, you know, General, you know, Short Dick, he's not going to be sitting in bed with his wife going, honey, I, I really regret I'm like rubber mistake. stamping the 320. <laughs> I made a terrible mistake. Here. Yeah. So Mac, uh, someone wants to know if you torture tested the PO one. The PO one, no. No, you haven't torture the tested PO7. it yet. You did the PO oh, seven. Sorry. Okay, that's what they wrote here. PO one. Well, yeah, so no, that, we haven't done the PO one yet. We haven't done a yeah. whole lot of torture tests this summer. We've been doing everything yeah. else. Okay, but what you're what you're carrying like, is the PO seven, right? No, PO one compact CZ seventy five. It's a compact CZ seventy five. Oh, okay. So, Ben, you haven't gotten around to torture testing it yet. I mean, outside of me stomping them in mud holes and random tests and stuff. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, that's, so that's <laughs> torture really testing. Hard on guns, but yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll get around to it. But it, it, it yeah. yeah. I guess I guess what they're trying to find out is if that's you know if you're carrying that. I could tell you that Mac is a pretty serious dude. If he's carrying that, he's not doing it lightly, right? I'm assuming you're not just no, lightly the carrying. The made was 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 the VP nine because I hadn't shot. What made me fall in love with the VP nine was the ergonomics and the shootability of the gun. Um, you know, never, never, never adopt something, never be an early adopter of something. And I broke my own rule and taking a first generation firearm and making it a carry gun. You, you need to get yeah. through a couple of iterations before they've worked all the kinks out. That's true. Just about yeah. everything. Yeah. Whatever, um, whatever happened with the Daewoo? I think we, we both at one point, I don't know if you, you probably still have that Daewoo that? pistol. Right. The LH9? Yeah, the LH9. Oh, it's Lionheart. Lionheart. That's yeah. They, it's still buried in the back of the safe. Yeah. Okay. The, the, what Lionheart did is they took a $300 um, K5 service pistol from South Korea, slapped some Cerakote on it, serrations and night sights, and sold it for 1000 bucks, and nobody wanted it. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. It seemed I told like a cool idea at the time. Bring in the K5 service pistol and sell it for 400 bucks. It'll sell like crazy. Don't listen to me. Yeah. And no, weren't, they, weren't they also planning on building, bringing in a rifle? Uh, yeah, but things, I, I mean, through the grapevine, I've heard that, that Lionheart and uh, Daewoo have had a bit of a falling out, so I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for the, uh, the K1 or K2 to come back into the country. Oh, okay. That's too bad. I'm a fan of those. Okay, what were you trying to say? What were you trying to say there, Patrick? Oh, no, it's just the, the, whatever the hell it is, the, the Lionheart, the DP-51 or K5. Just a kind of crappy handgun all around. I don't. I wouldn't call it crappy. It's been a service pistol for twenty years. I think it's actually a pretty neat one. It's it's different, but oh, yeah, no, no, it's different. You know it's what it is? It's 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 a it's basically a fifty nine series Smith and Wesson. It even uses the damn magazine. Um, you know, you'd have to say that the fifty nine series Smith and Wesson was garbage, and I I don't think that's the case. I think it's probably one of the best guns Smith Very built. Group is not a fifty nine series Smith and Wesson. That's definitely misleading, man. Well, the trigger mechanism is completely different. That's what I'm saying. It's 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 yeah, very that, similar, but the trigger mechanism with the forward pushing forward, double action, weird safety, the triple action trigger, whatever they call it, is definitely different. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. the different. eighty percent of that handgun is a direct copy of the Smith and Wesson 59 so, series. So here, this just to just to change this a little bit, because someone's asking me about your high point torture test. What about the military adopting the high point? I'm being <laughs> facetious. <laughs> before you, before you it. Smack, might as well. Before you reach through and <laughs> smack me, Mac. <laughs> well, you, you shoot it to the ranks and you throw it away. Hey, get another one. You know. You don't, you don't even have to carry spare magazines. Just spare high points. Yeah, yeah. right. When it's empty, just leave it in the field. Yeah. You know, this could happen. This could happen. Why Actually, Why was High Point left out? 
<laughs> well, because it wasn't a modular handgun. Uh, Only seventy-five percent of the population could shoot it. Oh, okay. I think the high point's pretty modular, man. You can use it as a gun. You can use it as a blow dryer, a hammer. <laughs> do a lot. Yeah. But I uh, guess if it if it has to fit in everyone's hand, that's probably not going to work. Mm. If, if hey, the definition of modular. Has anyone else here bro actually broken one, like dead, done? No, I've tried. It, it's a good gun for the money. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it that. Okay. Yeah, I've only okay. I've only broken it trying to take it apart. If you try to um, <laughs> take it down, you will break yeah, the crap out not, of it. It's not hard. Manuel says don't do that. <laughs> if it can use a punch and a hammer, it's not hard. Okay. So yeah. I, 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 a lot of people yeah. can't though. So. Me a broken one. Yeah. No, I've you guys never. Something funny. I just shot a video on a handgun. I forgot even existed. The Smith and Wesson. It's called a SW380, and it's made out of Z Mac. And it has uh, roll pins holding it together. There is no takedown lever. Hold on. I'm um, going to look this up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I found one in the used gun section of a gun store. I couldn't resist buying it. I bought it for 125 bucks. Oh, yeah. I think I a video with it today. It's uh, it's pretty funny. To its credit, it works. But it's it's a Z-Mac. <laughs> it's a Sigma with a Z-Mac slide on it. And no slide stop, slide release, no last round hold open. And you literally need a hammer and a punch to take it apart. I can't believe Smith and Wesson put their name on it. They made it for about eighteen months, and they quit. They realized their folly. How long ago was this? Was like late late nineties, like mid to late nineties time. Yeah, it was a nineties gun. I think it was an. I think I think it was ninety four. I want to say I can't remember. Oh, yeah. If it was in production, I'm sure it would have beat the Sig out in the military trials, though. Oh wow! Ah, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I still maintain. Just military box three eighty pistol. I still maintain that it was hookers that helped them win that contract, but. That's just me. Yeah. yeah. The no, that's how that's how contracts are won. Yeah. Are won man. All yeah. you gotta do is get the right general out, get him get him on videotape doing something he shouldn't be doing, and yeah. there you go. Boom. That's, Next thing you know, you got a high point as a service pistol. That's yeah. the Russian way. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, more about the comrade. So, oh, so now we're back. Now we're blaming the Russians for all this. Oh, yeah, she, she loved you a long time. Oh, what? Yeah. Was Russia involved there, in the MHS program? Yeah. There is evidence that the Russians <laughs> hacked into the MHS program, and that's why we have this pig, the SIG pig. <laughs> we call it a pig, a pig 320, the, the SIG P320. Uh, yeah. No. So, you know, just for anyone who's just tuning in, you know, we're just trying to, like, talk about what's going on with the P320s here. It seems like uh, the Dallas PD, and I don't think the da Dallas PD hasn't actually tested this gun yet, right? No, not, not, that I, not to my knowledge. I, like, I haven't really been able to get much out of DPD in regards to what they have done. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, one moment, guys. Hookers oh. and, uh, yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, is and I saw something that says that they had an old manual or something like that from Sig you know, that said that don't don't drop it. Don't drop it. Well, yeah. I mean that that should be in every manual. Don't don't drop it. Yeah. yeah. Don't um, drop this thing. It's generally a bad idea. I, I think it's a whole lot of hoopla, and and people are looking for reasons to tear the P320 down right now, and and you know it, it kind of reading between the lines, trying to find fault with the gun. I mean it, it it's um. You know, it is what it is. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of those things in circulation, and and yeah. I'm sure if there were was a drop safety issue, we would have heard about it a long time ago, because right. there are plenty of people out there that have probably dropped them by now, yeah. um, and I'm not aware of any incidents that um, because I, yeah. I I would imagine it'd be quite public if something like that did happen. It'd be all over the internet almost instantly. So, and yeah. a couple of them are probably lawyers too. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, and what's funny is everybody's overlooking the fact that uh, the FBI and the Indianapolis PD, I got to handle one of the Indianapolis PD guns and shoot it on their range, but they had the Glock, um, they had the Glock 17M and they fielded those pistols. They trained their officers, got them out, got them in the field with the guns and immediately recalled them because they were spontaneously disassembling themselves when they were fired. The slide, okay. the slide wow. barrel and recoil spring would just spring right off the front of the gun. So, wow. You know, everybody can make a boo-boo, um, and they, you know, immediately recalled all those pistols. Uh, the Marines just went to the 19M, so hopefully they've, they've solved that problem. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, you know, all machines are capable of being, you know, problematic or having failures. Yeah. I, I don't really think that there's anything to this, this story, at least not yet, I, outside of, you know, the rumor mill. The Internet's great for making rumors about guns going off yeah. when they're dropped and whatnot. 
And we're, and we're and not perpetuating taken out of at all. We're not perpetuating. The, <laughs> we're not, no, no I, we're just. I, I don't. I've never seen anything credible to suggest that the yeah. B three twenty has a drop problem. I mean, I I can ding it for other things, but um, drop failures. I I. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And also, I mean, for all the people that have them out there, I don't think you need to panic or anything like that. You know, they won't. Yeah. People are going to keep buying them as fast as they can. I mean, if, if Sig wants to make even more money, all they have to do is paint them all flat, dark earth and make it look like the and, and, and put a stupid safety on it, a manual safety. Uh, and and people will buy them as fast as they can produce them because that's what the U.S. Army bought. So, yeah, it's kind of like uh, NASCAR in the old days, right? Yeah. How's that? We, uh, I'm well, hands if you, if, yeah, if you saw, if you, you know, this is what I hear about in the olden days. I wasn't really around back then, but I hear that, you know, if you went out there and saw this car running on the track and it won or whatever, then you went to the dealership and you wanted to buy one. Right, right, right. right. You know, and I think that goes on in some, we were talking about that with the uh, Draco pistol, yeah. the, you know, Draco AK pistol. A lot of people are buying them from gun stores just because there's a rapper named That's Draco. Awesome. Yeah, they're like yeah, a or, rap song now. Is it a rap song or a rapper? Well, there's a there's a song and they mention them in like every song. So oh, yeah. see, see, there you it's go. This is in case choppers now. It's they call them Dracos and oh wait, I thought kind of, a chopper, kind of like pop thought, cultures like selling the guns now. So it's kind of weird. Yeah, I thought a chopper was full full auto. Like anything that was man. full auto. It's it's. That's yeah. a little out of my lane. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm getting kind of old. I should know about the rap stuff, but I'm kind of like disconnected. <laughs> oh, you do. You do. <laughs> All, All right. I know is that there's guys coming into the store buying Dracos because rappers talk about it. All right, Tim, I know you got to go. Yep, I got to roll. Looks like we looks like we also lost Patrick. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, you know, no, we, you guys. Did we, deter we I think we figured out that this is probably just bad rumor. But the P320 yeah. is, is just an okay handgun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, through my 1,000 rounds and 13-minute test. Yeah, and, absolutely. So and, we're going to stay here. Tim's going to go. Thanks a lot for coming in. You really helped. You, you know, you brought in a lot of good information on that. All right, um, guys. And anyone out there who wants to see, Mac does have a video of him torture testing a P320. So go look at that. There's no way you're going to shoot your P320 that much. <laughs> I may even take it out and try to run another thousand rounds through it. I, I might just shoot it until the thing explodes, see what it does. Uh, that I mean, that sounds like a really good, good idea to me. Hard. I want to see that. You, you got to get, I, you, you gotta get the, electric, the electric glove. <laughs> and stand by because the Glock Gen 4 is next. Yeah, Mac, do you have one of those electric auto shooting gloves? You should by now. <laughs> <laughs> That's for testing. Yeah. Do you have that, Mac? No. Come on. <laughs> Why? No. <laughs> you're not gonna test that. That's what you're saying. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Let's put a drill bit let's put a drill on a trigger. Yeah, there you go. That's not illegal. Mac, I wanna see you test that glove, please. What glove? There's a there's a full auto glove yeah, something. It's a auto glove. <laughs> you haven't heard about this? I didn't even know that existed. I thought you were talking about putting a like a drill or something. There's, it, no. Basically that's what it is. It's electric motor with a cam on it. Yeah, you. Ha I can't believe you haven't seen this yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Matt, if there's an electric motor involved, I almost guarantee you the ATF would classify it as a machine gun. Yeah, you have to get this, okay? You have to get this. Okay? There's no way that this thing. No. <laughs> Not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> they hear like. <laughs> this. This seems like such a fake news story. <laughs> I love how they go, everything is designed by military veterans. veterans now. It's designed by military veterans. Silence, it, it's as silent as the footsteps of a Navy SEAL. Yeah, I believe this as much as I do in the flat earth theory. <laughs> oh, that guy's gotta be a veteran, he's a multi-cam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, uh, this is dangerous <laughs> right here. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I tell you what, based upon what I see right there, I would expect a lawsuit to be filed very shortly by slide fire. <laughs> they sue everybody. It looks like it has a finger rest on it. And if that's the case, that's uh, they're, they're in violation of their utility patent. And Jeremiah takes that pretty seriously. Mac, all we've, right. all, we've all voted. We want to see you test it. I know you got to nope. go. <laughs> <laughs> I no. shoot myself. <laughs> well, probably a lot of people want to see me shoot myself. No, <laughs> no, no. We don't want to see you hurt yourself. Okay, no, thanks. I don't, I don't want to keep you. I know you got to get home. All right, guys. All right, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. If I can figure out how to turn this thing off, I'm an old duffer. Just hang up. The hang up. The, uh, the phone. The red phone. Button. Three, two, one. <laughs> See ya.
<laughs> okay, Mac is out. I don't know if Patrick is going to get a chance. Patrick, if you're listening, uh, wow. you get a chance to come I back got, in. I got more SIG than I ever thought I'd get in my whole life. <laughs> Well, you don't. Uh, you. I'm not. You've, I'm not about all that stuff. I, I. It doesn't do anything for me. I know it's. It's. it's to me, it's kind of. Um, it's. It's. Um, it's cyclic. You know, yeah. It'll, it'll be yeah. popular for a while and it'll go away. Yeah, but you do have the rifles. You have the rifles. So. I, I actually no. He didn't talk too high about the five five six, but it does have some. Um, if you're looking at things the way it's made, it does have some interesting features. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so um, I I do have a Sig rifle. I'm trying to remember what Sig rifle I have right now. It's, uh, and actually, I have um, some parts kits for Sig five six. Uh, a PE fifty. I think, yeah, I think I have a Sig five sixteen or something like that. Okay, yeah, that's kind yeah. of the, yeah, 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 which is pretty good. I haven't, you know, that's piston driven and right. that's so like, so is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's rifles. Uh, I just, I just want to before we go forward, Walter. I just want to thank if Patrick, if you can hear us and you can get back on, please do. If you can't, thanks a lot, Patrick. I know he was out there walking the dog and dealing with the family and walking all that kind dog. of stuff. Um, so if he can't come back on, we will have Patrick on in the future. We're making plans to have him to come on and talk with you guys. You know, f um, from the firearm blogs, really good guy. He's been doing some great articles. Yeah, I'd like, like to, that. I'd like to talk to him too. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good dude. And of course, Mac, you know, coming in, Tim Harmson coming in here. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I know he was like literally in the car and he probably like turned, <laughs> did a U turn and had to explain to his wife that, yeah, you know, Hank Strange is making me go back in and work. <laughs> I actually, so. be before you text me this afternoon, I told Peggy um, that. She she had me tonight, and she's like, "I do," and I'm oh. like, uh, uh "Oh, so I have messed up another relationship." Here. No, <laughs> I'm I'm well, so sorry, Peggy. I will send you the auto glove. No, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say something. All you gotta do to that auto glove is stick a dildo on the end, and then it'll, it'll be it'll be um it'll be accepted in all different genders. We'll say that. Or yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen. You know. Um, I would, you know, that auto glove thing is funny. I just don't really believe that's real. So we'll see. Well, somebody, I, I think, somebody's getting a lot of airplay. Yeah, they get, yeah, they're getting a lot out of it. So, you know what? I mean, it's Friday. I know you're saying that you've got to do stuff with the wife and all that. Well, I don't want to. No, I'm just, you know, we, don't, we can't go marathon. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. So what, uh, what, what do you want to talk about? You know, let's, you want to hit up some news? Yeah, I did. You want yeah, to show some guns other than the the P3? Oh, you know what? Here's what something I want to tell you guys. What, 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 what. I think this is really cool. This is from another blog, but if you guys check out the uh, Truth About Guns blog, and there's an article there about the Identilock, which I featured on one of these hangouts. Yeah, I think what? probably uh, in the beginning of the week or something. Eltenda. Yeah, with Eltenda, actually, with Eltenda. So maybe that was last week. So the truth about guns shared that video because they did an article on the Identilock. Oh, cool. And they shared our video on their thing. So go check that out. So on the truth about guns, the Identilock story, and you'll see our video is on there. You know, so it's just, you know, a little shameless plug. Oh, there you go. You got mentioned, you know, <laughs> and anyone who is watching this, please share this with your friends and all that kind of stuff. Let them know what we're doing. Here, you know that we're talking, we're keeping it current and real. Like <laughs> CNN ain't got nothing on us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm looking at a thing on the firearms blog. It says that um, Bass Pro Shops is going to sell suppressors. Yeah, I heard about that. I, I oh. think right now they've got um, they've got a wall with silencer code. Yeah, I see. Or yeah. as as you know, I like to call it silencer code. Silencer code. Yeah. Break it apart. Yeah. Yeah. They don't necessarily like that. You know, nah. they don't like my pronunciation of it. Yeah, but you're and, still you're still yeah. doing it. So. Yeah, I'm still doing it because I like it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, keep it. And uh for now, I'm just gonna keep saying silence are go. Oh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's cool. Hey, what do you what do you think about these um AR fifteen um the the new ones with the helmet? shape on the receiver on the on the oh magazine. yeah the um the they leonidas like, yeah leonidas i kind of like them i mean you know it looks good that looks yeah, good that looks sexy yeah, yeah you know yeah, it's, um, i mean I, if you're going to survive in the ar world you got to do something like that and that's a yeah um what's the thing what's the thing we were all doing that had to do with those 300 dudes i forget it now there was like a the movie 
No, oh. we all had the translation. It was like all translated, and I forgot. It's like totally gone out of my brain. Oh, I don't. I don't know. I yeah, don't know. Um, that, I'm that's... trying to remember what it was. Everyone had it on their hats. I know I had it on on a on a hat, and it was like weird lettering. I can't remember. Someone, Patrick's someone, tell, someone will tell me on. Oh, Patrick, what's up, Patrick's man? Patrick's back. Yep. Sorry about that. I had to bail out to get the dog into the. Uh... Oh, that's cool. I, you know, we understand. So, yeah, uh, Mac, um, Mac is, you know, Mac is gone there? home. Oh, again? No, we're here. <laughs> Can you hear us? Yeah, I'm gonna turn my video off because uh, like, I'm on my cell right now. But um... yeah, so that's cool. Yeah. So sorry about that. I had to get the dog into the vet uh, exam room. Okay. Oh, is your dog okay? Yeah, and no, I just uh, got into something he shouldn't have. Oh, okay. Got into the stash? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, he killed. He killed a couple field mice, and uh, we, oh. we got a uh, tummy issue. After the, the the field mice already eat the uh, poison. I yeah, I hope not. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, we had a we had a we had a, um, a, a, a Australian sheep dog. I mean, a, a cattle dog, a blue healer, and he was always getting it. Next thing, he's munching on something. It's like, what the hell is he munching on? He's munching on a dead rat, and we'd put poison out, but it didn't kill him. He kept right on going. So, you know, he lived like seventeen years, so it didn't hurt him a bit. So, wow, yeah, so, pretty wait, amazing. What did I uh, what did I miss out on here? See, uh, oh, you know, you know what? Uh, well, there's a couple things, but let me just mention this real quick. The uh, the thing that the Leonidas we were just talking about the um, the uh, yeah. let me see what is this the helmet, from, the helmet? from Sharp Bros. It's from Sharp Bros. Over the overthrow lower. Oh, yeah, the, no, I'm out on that. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm pop smoke and let you guys talk about it. <laughs> yeah, well, so no, we, I was just saying that what it reminds me, what it reminded me of is uh, that Greek thing, come and take it, um, which was. Um, Molen Labe, yeah. Yeah, Molen Labe. Yeah, so if you're a Molen Labe guy, this is you know this is a cool build to do. But um, hey, what was that? Melon label. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. everyone argues about how to pronounce it. <laughs> I think it's Molen Labe. No, no, no. They're like I'm pronouncing it absolutely incorrectly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that's why I have the the the, the Molen Labe guys. Is, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see. It. Well, hey, you've got melon label on your arm. Yeah, that was a that was a hot meme for a minute. I mean, I have to admit, I even had like a couple of patches and stuff like that. Yeah. So I that's kind know. of like disappeared. I don't know if I tattooed on myself though. I don't know. I'm not into that stuff. So. Yeah. But what we were talking about, Patrick, right after you dropped out there, we were talking with Mac before he left about the uh, the auto glove. So is that real? <laughs> I don't know. I hope so because I like ridiculous things. I'm not saying I like the auto glove. I just like that it exists. If it is real, okay. Uh -huh. Now you got. Didn't you guys cover this on the firearm blog, or, yeah. or am I wrong yeah. here? And um, kind of a daily post on it, kind of an informative, like, "Hey, this thing has surfaced." You know, <laughs> put it on your radar, guys. Uh, I don't think we have any hard information. We haven't had any, uh, you know, contact with the company or individual who's producing it. I don't believe, but I, yeah. I mean, because I just want to know if they're like perpetrating a stunt on us, like they are with the, you know, the flat earthers. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I and I'm even more hopeful of that. I'm, I'm hoping that they like even go so far as to try to introduce it at Shot Show or a, v, a version two at Shot Show. Um, like I, I, I hope that they, <laughs> they are like trolling all of us. It would be amazing. Yeah, it would be funny because we all felt. And and speaking of of you know trolling and uh, clickbaiting people, Patrick, <laughs> while we have you on here, I don't know if you know about this, but you guys totally caught me with that thing about you being fired. <laughs> oh yeah, he went. He was he was a hundred fifty percent into it. That's yeah, I'm glad you're amused by this, Patrick. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I was fired technically. Yeah, it's but from TV. yeah, but <laughs> I was mad for you, man. I was like, I was getting ready to start like a free Patrick <laughs> campaign. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, like it was a really fun video to do. Um, everybody yeah. around us was outstanding. Uh, you know, I mean, it, the fact that they actually let me ride the conveyor belt 
should yeah. tell you how much they were, how into it they were. Yeah, but Brownells are good guys. The fact that they played along with this joke with you, is, I mean, that just goes to indicate how cool they are and how they get it. You know, they're not like there's a there's a lot of, uh, well, I, you know, there's gun companies that are really stuck up and caught up with themselves and don't want to joke around, make fun of themselves. And then you have like yeah. Brownells, which is some really cool well, guys. I, I, just an observation on my point. I've been I've been, you know, around Brownells for a long time, you know, seeing them lately. They've just kind of like they're all over the place on social media and and um, their advertising has really taken a hundred and eighty degree turn from being real conservative to being just kind of on the edge, we'll say. So it's good. Yeah, that, that's their plan. Like I actually had a conversation with a guy running the program and um, they brought a new PR guy on. They brought a, um, I don't know if he's new, but they, they're taking a new PR approach. Uh, yeah. They've got a PR, uh, a new social approach, uh, and their social guy Josh is just an amazing individual. Yeah, Josh is a really cool, dude. I, so I, is Roy I, I over there. I want to shout out Roy over at Brownells because I. Oh, yeah. uh, that's how I got connected to Brownells because I saw him at the Thousand Man shoot, and he yeah. said he was from Brownells, and I started like trying to, you know, do my pitch to him to tell him I was on YouTube and stuff, and he was like, "Dude, I, I know who you are." <laughs> So, you know, get, get in touch with us and we'll help you out. And they have been helping me out. So. Correct me if I'm wrong. They're aiming toward a younger crowd. Yes. Yeah. So, like, the, the older guys, uh, the, the gunsmiths. Because typically are. Brownells was, you know, supplying parts for gunsmiths. And definitely gunsmiths are older guys. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they, they're already, they already have that market. They are, the gunsmiths and the older guys already know, hey, I, I can go there to get a new set of 1911 grip bushings or whatever. Right, right. Um, the younger guys are the ones that are Googling something and going to the first retailer. And uh, currently there's an issue where Google is displaying, you know, one retailer over others. And it's kind of this right. thing. Um, and that, that, that's, that's a website IT nerd thing that I don't want to get into. Yeah. But uh, they're doing uh, everything they can to get the younger crowd to understand that Brian Ellis is a premier destination for, our, you know, right. part accessory cool. cool stuff yeah and they are i mean and they've like i think they've also expanded i mean they're actually selling guns nowadays yes they are yeah actually um i got to poke around their gun cage and like not only did they have a bunch of guns oh, oh yeah. yeah okay i think yeah no i think but patrick had to answer answering questions uh to the vet tech um yeah. okay yeah, no, I, I'll go now. Um, yeah, no, I, I got to spend some time in the uh, the gun cage, man. And, like, not only there are a bunch of cool guns in there, but, like, they have an entire aisle of nothing but cans, nothing but suppressors. Mm, nice. <laughs> super cool. Yeah. They're, they're cool people. I I, uh, I would love to get some people from Brownells on. I've reached out to them, so they're, like, you know, working on figuring out who's actually going to come on. Uh, hopefully they don't look at too many of these. <laughs> I'd like to get my stuff in Brownells. But, Before they come on. Yeah, you know, maybe when, when we get them on, we'll talk to them about that. Well, you know? they're, yeah, well yeah, we'll have to chat. Yeah, um, we'll see. You know, we'll, sh we'll schmooze with them. They're good guys. They're good guys. So, yeah. um, you know, so we forgive you. We forgive you, Patrick. We, you know, we forgive the firearm blog. You kind of. I, I, I didn't want forgiveness on that. I just wanted your view. <laughs> yeah, I know. I get it. <laughs> and no, you did well. You did well. It was a lot of views on that video, right? <laughs> I, I want to say it's about sixty k, sixty five k right now. Yeah, so that's pretty uh, good. No, it's not bad. Not bad. Uh, you know, I, it's a pretty good. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a pretty good response to the video. I had, like I said, I had a lot of fun making it. You know, and the experiences that I, the things I got to see as I went through the process of being fired from each job, because I had to learn a little bit about what I was, what I would be doing mm -hmm. before I would screw something up. Um, and like seeing what everybody there at Brian Ellis does is kind of eye opening. You know, they're a really professional outfit and they really know what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, but but let me say, if the firearm blog does ever actually fire you, you know, you've cried wolf. So. <laughs> you better you're gonna have to go to Brownells at that point. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> Not I'd be happy to go to Brownells. That's yeah, I mean, so would I. <laughs> you know, they could fire me all day. <laughs> go ahead, Walter. What were you gonna say? No, I was gonna say about the firearms blog. I really enjoy the articles about the um the like the Brazilian guns and all the weird stuff. That's uh, uh Um I think 
Ronaldo might do that, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. There's some oh. good guys. Um, over, over at the firearms blog, I know Phil White pretty good. He's a good dude. Um, you know Phil, right? No, I never met him. Oh, you never met him? Okay, good guy. Um, and I think he he you know he uh, he posted some stuff today on on this particular uh, subject. But we are going to have you come on. So we're 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 like working out. We're negotiating with your people, our people, talking to your people, and we're getting everything <laughs> straightened out, right? So let's be fair here. Your wife keeps emailing me, begging me to come on. I'm just kidding. Yeah, uh, no. yeah. <laughs> okay. See, Lola's gonna she's gonna hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Seventeenth, I think that we're, we've kind of nailed it down. Uh, yeah, I've, got a pretty, I've, I've had a reasonably ridiculous schedule the last three months, and just finding a window in there has been kind of tough. No, I know, I know. We're we're looking forward to it. I think it'll be a good conversation. You know, yeah. I know you're. Yeah, I know you're doing stuff. I don't want to keep you. You know, I don't want to keep you on the line. Um, you know, obviously your dog's going through some stuff, so we hope he gets better and everything's all good with him. I appreciate it, man. And I, I'll chat with you on the 17th. Man. All right, brother. I look forward to it. Peace. Nice talking to you. All right. Nice talking to you, Walter. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Patrick. Patrick's a good guy. Good of him to come on. Yeah. You know, yeah good yeah. of him to come on. So, um, see so Meredith, Meredith Mayhem just donated 10 bucks, Walter. All right. 10 bucks to the chat. And he says, oh. Sick Semper Tyrannus. Oh, that's some more, that, some more that. Some more that. So. Funny um, language. Yeah. So be, I'm not even going to look it up. I'm going to try to think what the six semper, six semper tyrannus means. Um, you sick Tyrannosaurus Rex, yeah. you? <laughs> I, I don't know. I have I'm no just, idea. Just... Meredith Mayhem, tell us what six semper tyrannus means. Uh, you know. Uh, and don't pay any attention I'll to what just... I say either. So, you know. yeah. I will. Um, I, here, you know what? I will, I will uh, Google it, you know, while. Uh, well, I show you this. Uh, uh, Sent me receiver with an HK stock stuck on the back. Okay, go ahead. You can show us that. I'll I'll lock it on you. Go ahead, show us that. Future. And what is what is that? What receiver? Uh, this is basically one of the uh, Century Arms sent me. Oh, oh, okay, an HK type. With an, with, yeah, with an HK stock on the back. Just I oh, just, cool. I just slid the two of them together to see if they'd work together. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I'm I thinking like that. I I need to build me a 308 with like a. Eight inch barrel, that would be cool. Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Be a lot of fun. Full auto. Uh, yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah, full well, auto. Why not? So, might as well. <laughs> yeah. I got might all the well. parts. So. <laughs> yeah. So six semper tyrannis is a Latin phrase meaning thus always to tyrants. Yeah, death to the mofos. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so which is a shortened version of the phrase six semper evello mortem tyrannis, which means thus always I bring death to tyrants. So ah. six so six semper tyrannis means death to tyrants. So yep. there you go. I totally had to look that up. But shout out, shout out to Meredith's Mayhem for hitting us up with that. And yep. and then also Meredith's Mayhem says that's sexy, Walter. He says that's real sexy. Uh, what the so, uh, me or the uh, or uh, the uh, or the <laughs> yeah? I, I think the gun. That, yeah, yeah, that gun. one. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a better. That's a better choice. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the gun. <laughs> so you know what? Um, here's I want to. I'm not going to keep this going too much longer. Yeah, but I'll I Chinese do, is here. So yeah, I do want to tell this story. I want to give a shout out. He's probably not watching, but you know I live in. You know where I live, Walter? Because you yes, come. Yes, I out do. Here. Yep, yep, yep. I live out in the country, and I just wanted to say, like, I love living out in the country. So something happened to me today that is a reason why I love. Li one of the reasons why I live like living out here in the country so much. Um, I wasn't there on the property, and we have a bunch of goats, as you guys know. One of the baby goats got out, and I wasn't there. So right across from me, there's a um, there's a recycling center, and one of the guys that works in the recycling center like came over, and and one of my other neighbors, they found they they had to run down my goat <laughs> and catch her, and then get her back onto my property, and uh, and all that kind of good stuff. So. You know, and I wasn't there. And then he sent me a message through Facebook because we, you know, we talk and all that kind of stuff, but I don't actually right. have his number and everything. So, and he knows what I'm doing and he knows I was probably like running around doing some, you know, YouTube, social media stuff. So he sent me a message through my fan page to tell me that, you know, they helped out and they put the goat back there. And that's the awesome thing about living in that's the country, nice. man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you've got good neighbors. Everyone looks out for everyone else. Very cool thing. 
Right, right. That's cool. Yeah, so I thought I would share that with you guys. And also, 904 Outdoors just ammo donated. Money, ammo yeah, money for Walter. Bucks, Walter. Oh, oh man. Money. Let me see. That's that 50 cal. That's two rounds. Yeah, that's, you know, <laughs> that's ammo money. But, hey, we'll take it. We'll know. take it. I'm not, I'm not Thank proud. you. I'm not yeah, proud. thank you, 904 Outdoors. <laughs> I see a penny, I pick it up. You know, what's that yeah. going to do, you know? Hey, hey, five bucks, you know, that can definitely – that can definitely help out. I'll make sure I get that to Walter, Steve. Yeah, okay. Thanks I, to Steve. I, yeah, yeah. For doing that. I'll make sure Walter gets that. Because he won't let me Oh, you you already have your piggy bank out? Is that what you're no. saying? <laughs> Actually, this is a, some shot show swag. It oh. was from um Timony Triggers. Okay, very some cool. Of the, some of the stuff they were giving away. It's, Peggy threw it at me telling me the Chinese is here. Oh, okay. So here we go. So I just want to thank everyone here in the comments, everyone that came on with us. You know, this was kind of put together a little frantically. Um, big shout out to Mac from Military Arms Channel for coming yeah. in. Uh, big shout out to Patrick R from the Firearm Blog for coming in and commenting on the SIG P320. And of course, my friend, my partner in crime, Walter Keller. Thanks for coming on. Make sure you guys um, check out Safety Harbor Firearms. I want to thank everyone that sponsors us, like Safety Harbor Firearms, Rand CLP, Andrew's Custom Leather, and of course, Big Daddy Guns. Yeah. That we got featured. You know, Big Daddy Guns is all over the. You know, is in that video that we got featured on the Truth About Guns. So shout out to Big Daddy Guns for giving us the space and the bandwidth and all that kind of cool stuff we really appreciate them as well as everyone that sponsors us and looks out for us on patreon we're patreon slash hank strange we need that now more than ever youtube is still kicking our asses and doing like stealth blocking and all kinds of other craziness out there so we yeah do... there's monkey business going on yeah there's a lot of that going on we, we probably should have a video and talk about it sometime in the future but you know i appreciate everyone out there walter you know how we end this right Peace out. Peace, peace out.